Well, hi there, Heart for the World. Great to see you today. So excited for uh, today's lesson, um, chapter 28 of the story. As we continue our journey through the New Testament, um, it's just so fun to see uh, the shift in, in the, the, the story of the human race. And we talked about the resurrection last week, and then just this past Sunday we talked about um, the Holy Spirit coming and just the changes that were, were happening in the first century when Jesus rose again. Um, it was completely uh, a shift unlike anything the world had ever seen uh, since creation. The whole world was changing because of this Jesus who rose again, who claimed to be God and rose from the dead and is now alive. And so uh, we talked just a little bit about the shift that was happening. And just to, just to remind you a little bit of the context, we remember that in the Old Testament, um, God had made a covenant with his people, Israel. Covenants uh, were so much more powerful than contracts. That's why even marriages, you know, a, a godly marriage, a Christian marriage is based on a covenant, not a contract. Covenants are for life. Covenants are agreements that are taken very seriously. And in the Old Testament and the New Testament, um, when someone entered a covenant, they were basically willing to say, if I break my side of this agreement, I'm willing to die, or, or may I die if I fail this covenant. And so in the Old Testament, God made a covenant with Moses and Israel, and, and it was a covenant based on each party having a responsibility. It was a bilateral agreement where God says, hey, if you guys obey me, if you follow my commands, then I will bless you and I will protect you and you will be a great nation. And so thus began this journey uh, for the children of Israel of trying to behave or earn God's love, God's grace, God's blessing. And we know what a roller coaster that was. And so the old covenant was, it was based on our works. How good, how much did we deserve uh, God's love. And so uh, the Bible says that the old covenant, that the law was given to show us our sin, to show us that we needed God. Inevitably, the, the people of Israel failed, right? They, they never could quite keep the law. Also in that time, um, they built a temple. They built a temple for the presence of God. And um, God didn't ever ask for a temple. He kind of liked his digs in the tent. He had a tabernacle and he liked the tabernacle because he could, he could get up and leave and move and wherever he went, the people had to go. Um, but Israel built him a temple and he moved in and as that happened, um, this God that was on the move became uh, stationary in a way. He was in the temple and the people had relegated him to, to being a local or a regional God. And once God was in a place, the people then began to just live the way they wanted to live. Solomon had 700 uh, concubines and just all these different ways where they, they turned away from God. God, if we need you, we'll come over here. And so this mindset, this system, this agreement, this covenant was carrying over, obviously, into the time when Jesus was born and when he died. And so this whole, this whole way of thinking that we have to earn our righteousness, that we have to be good people, that God will bless us if we obey his commands, some 600 commands. Obviously, the Ten Commandments were the big ones, but then there was all these other ceremonial laws and, and just different rules that they had to follow, eating, dietary laws that developed over time. And so here comes Jesus, and he basically just flips everything upside down. He brings a new covenant, a new covenant, which was a new agreement that he was making, not with just the Jewish people or, the, or Israel, that he wanted to make with the whole world. Jesus came and said, I, I came to fulfill the law. In Hebrews, it says that the old covenant 
is becoming obsolete. And, and it literally became obsolete in A.D. 70 when the temple was destroyed. And so Jesus came to bring this new covenant. And I think many Christians today, many people in church today, they, they, tr they mix the old covenant and the new covenant. And they, they, um, they try to put a covenant agreement that God made with Israel upon their life. You know, now I'm under the old covenant. I'm under the old laws. And I see, so, I see people, precious people, get so caught up in, oh, I'm not obeying this law. I'm not obeying this law. Look at all the laws in the Old Testament that I'm not obeying. Am I saying the Old Testament is, is obsolete? No, I'm not. Am I saying that the Old Testament wasn't God? No, I'm not. That was God's word. That is God's word. Um, but those laws, that agreement that God made was for a specific people at a specific time. And now in the new covenant, Jesus came to make a new agreement with us. And this agreement was a unilateral agreement based on himself. He just said, hey guys, you don't have what it takes to earn my righteousness. You don't have what it takes to be blessed by me. If I leave this up to you, you're always going to be falling off the cliff. You guys need me. And so he made an agreement with himself. And he died himself to say, hey, this isn't based on you anymore. This is completely based on my sacrifice, my blood, my forgiveness, my resurrection. And so that all who would come to him would have the opportunity to receive this new agreement, this grace this sufficiency, this forgiveness that is not based on our works, but completely based on the finished work of Christ. And so now the whole world is flipped upside down. The Jewish people are, are scrambling. They're like, how can this be? Everything we've lived for, everything we've understood is now being pulled out from underneath us. You mean that we don't have exclusive access to God anymore? You mean that even if we live the right way, we won't be the most blessed nation in the world? You mean that God came for other people besides the Jewish people? That Jesus loves others? That God loves others just as much as he loves us? Yes. And the Gentiles, the Gentile world was turned upside down as well because the, the apostles were going and preaching, hey, there's only one God. All these other Greek gods you guys are worshiping, they, they're not going to help you at all. There's only one God uh, who is real and who is true, and that's Jesus. And the way you're living is a selfish way to live. It's destroying relationship and destroying community. And so the whole world is being turned upside down. And then the Holy Spirit comes in the middle of all this. Jesus told the disciples, don't leave, don't do anything until you have received the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit visits the apostles, the disciples, and the people that were praying, and they receive the power of God, the presence of God, and they go out in boldness. Everything has changed now. Peter goes out on that first day, and 3,000 people get saved. And so in the Old Covenant, God was relegated to a, a temple, a location. And now in the New Covenant, God says, and I'm giving you my spirit in 1 Corinthians, it says, you are the temple of God. And so now the Holy Spirit has come to reside in all of the followers of Christ. Now we don't have to just go to church to find God. We are the church. God was building a church. He was building something brand new. The Bible verse that I put in your notes there is uh, Matthew 3, or excuse me, 16, 18. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Jesus decided that the way I'm going to win the world is to put my spirit, my presence, inside of every one of you believers, and that you are, to com you are commissioned to take the very presence and power of God everywhere you go. And this is such a shift. The Jewish people, the temple was everything to them. They were willing to die for the temple. And now Jesus comes along and says, the temple is just a building. This church, Heart for the World, it's, it's, the building doesn't define Heart for the World. The people inside 
the building define heart for the world. Because if you have Christ, you carry the presence of God. And so what does this mean for us? This new covenant means that Jesus came for all mankind. He didn't just come for one people group or one nation or one language or one culture. America isn't better than any other nation, even though we like to say that a lot. At the core of it, America is equal to every other nation because Jesus loves every nation equally. And we are to see the value in every person on this earth, no matter their race, no matter their culture, no matter their language, no matter their gender. Jesus came for all people. And we saw in our story how Peter even revealed his prejudice with Cornelius. He said, our law doesn't let me talk to you. It took a while for the, for the early church, the early believers to work this out because the law divided people based on outward things. And Jesus said, no, I've come for the whole world. The new covenant means that we are to pursue people everywhere because Jesus pursued them, even his enemies he pursued. The new covenant means that we are to expect the power of God, the presence of God. I shared with you the story of Peter and John as they walked past that lame man at the gate. Peter, the man was asking for money and Peter says, I don't have any money, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. He didn't just walk by with a religious mindset uh, or I just need to be a good Christian mindset. Let me pray for you. Let me give you a few coins. He walked by saying, God, what do you want to give to this man? And God wanted to heal him instantly. One of the big shifts of the new covenant is that we are no longer bound by what we have, but by what God has. And many of us operate with the spirit of poverty, a scarcity mindset that I don't have what it takes. I don't have the love that I need for my family or I don't have a powerful prayer to pray for someone that's sick. I don't have the financial resources to be a blessing to this church. The shift of the new covenant takes your eyes off of you and says, God, what do you have? I contain the presence of God. And I am called to release whatever you have on this earth. There's two ways you can pray in the morning. You can say, God, what do I have for you? God, what do you want me to do today? Or you can say, God, what do you have for me? What do you want to give through me? What do you want me to believe you for to do in my life? And that changes everything. Changes everything. And last, the new covenant means that we are God's temple. We carry the presence of God. And Jesus came to bring a new way of living, not based on rules, but based on love. He's calling us, yes, we're supposed to obey. Yes, there is, how we live is important. There is morality. There is righteousness. But our righteousness, our morality is not driven by what we have to do but by who Jesus is and by the love he's given us and by the love we are called to share with other people. John concluded towards the end of his life, he said, God is love. God doesn't just share love. God doesn't just talk about love. He is love. And the disciples and the early Christians were so moved by the fact that God is love because they saw Jesus on the cross. They saw love dying for them. Love himself, dying on the cross. And they weren't motivated by the Ten Commandments, and they weren't motivated by what the 600 laws of the Old Covenant were. They were motivated by the fact that Jesus, the King of Kings, didn't even leverage his own divine privilege. He leveraged his love. He gave his life. And that love changed them And that love changed the world. And they began loving people everywhere. They began loving people in their life group and helping them. They began loving people in the world who were their enemies. They were were willing to die for people that didn't even care one bit about them because Jesus was willing to die 
for his enemies because Jesus was willing to sacrifice everything. And so today, I want to challenge you as a new covenant believer. How can you partner with God with this invitation to leave the old checklist behind, the old ways of thinking, and to invite the presence and the power of the living God He's a, if, if you're a believer, he's in you. But how do you activate him? How do you say, God, use me? God, take me. Some of you, maybe you've just seen God as someone you visit on Sunday or on Wednesday night. God wants to be so much more than a visitor. He wants to be the Lord. He has so much for you. And God loves Las Cruces. And he loves your community, wherever you live. And he wants you to take his presence. He wants you to take his love everywhere you go. And so I just challenge you today to dig deep, to really invite the Holy Spirit to reveal your heart and reveal your mind and what, and what you've believed and what God has for you. And as you partner with God, this community will change forever. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for this time and these people. Lord, we just give you our hearts. We invite your presence to be so active and strong right now. Lord, we just set aside all the old ways of thinking that keep us at, at arm's length from you. We just receive your love right now, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you discuss. We'll see you next time.